Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining me right now is Fred Flights. He's the managing editor of Newsmax sister site Lignet.com. He's also an experienced CIA analyst, former CIA analyst. Fred, it's great to talk to you. Good to be here. All right, so the breaking news out of Venezuela is uh, Venezuelan former President Hugo Chavez has, has died after a long battle with cancer. Talk to us about what this will mean uh, in the short term in Venezuela and elsewhere in South America. Well, uh Chavez had named his uh, vice president, uh, Maduro, as a successor. And I think it's likely that elections, Nicolas Maduro, will, will probably be the, the uh, front runner to win. Uh, there, there's a lot of uncertainty as to how the, the elections will take place. Under Venezuelan law, if the president dies within the first four years of a six year term, elections have to be held within 30 days. However, um, uh, Chavez was arguably not really the president because he was not sworn in on January 10th as he was supposed to be legally. They simply gave him the pass. So right now it's unclear whether Maduro is actually the vice president and exactly how they'll proceed. I have a feeling they'll just assume Chavez was vice president and they will have elections in 30 days. And because of a sympathy vote for uh, Chavez, Maduro is likely to win. And in terms of the opposition in Venezuela at this point, is there an opportunity for them to rally here and perhaps uh, gain a stronger foothold in the government than they were able to in the, in the prior elections? They're going to work hard at that. Henrique Capriles with Rodonsky uh, did surprisingly well in elections last fall, and it looked like he had a lead for a while. There were some allegations that there was some, uh, maybe some electoral fraud or some pressure brought on voters to, to, to win Chavez's victory. He certainly spent billions billions buying houses and basically using this to, to buy votes to win the last election. I, I think the sympathy vote is going to give an advantage to Chavez followers, but the economy is in such terrible shape. I think that uh, once um, this passes, the, the, the aftermath of Chavez's death, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of infighting among the supporters and the, the effects of the economy will center will we'll, we'll send them in on the population, and the opposition is likely to do very well. In, in other countries in South America, there's obviously no shortage of left-leaning, uh, either dictators or presidents, uh, however you want to define that. Is this going to change at all the, the makeup or the uh, dynamic in South America in terms of, of power? In the short term, it probably won't, because I think Maduro will continue Chavez's power, but uh, Chavez's influence and his policies. Um, but Maduro is not the charismatic figure that uh, Chavez was. He's not going to be able to promote the Chavez movement the way he did. He doesn't. He's a younger member of Chavez's uh, entourage. He doesn't have the support of some of the older members. I don't think he's going to be able to keep the movement together. And I've heard this from other experts who've looked at it. So in the short term, the very sharp uh, anti-American approach by Venezuela that they've been pushing in the hemisphere. I think that's going to that's going to be unchanged, at least in terms of Venezuela promoting it. But over the long term, I think there's some potential for the United States to work with elements in Venezuela to maybe to promote some more moderate leaders. Yeah, and it's certainly a region we don't hear as much about, not as much as we should. I'd venture to say. I also want to talk about Fred, what this means in terms of the the dynamic between Venezuela and Cuba. Some people would say that the Chavez had been the de facto leader of Cuba uh, as well or I'm sorry, uh, the other way around. Um, how does this impact the dynamic between Venezuela and Cuba and in, in a broader sense towards the United States? This is a very important angle. Cuba is dependent upon uh, Venezuelan oil, much of which they purchase through barter by providing Cuban doctors and services to Venezuela. Cuba can't borrow money uh, in the international financial market since it defaulted on loans about 15 years ago. So they're sort of in a dire situation in terms of energy. So they're very dependent on, on Venezuela for oil. And I, I think it's certain that, that Cuba is very worried right now. They're going to do everything they can to try to hold together the Chavez coalition in Venezuela. And, well, this certainly does uh, set a lot of uh, parts moving here in, in the whole scheme of things. And uh, we'll have to, to uh, see where things go from here. Fred Flights, good to talk to you again and take care. Good to be here.